For NY Up, uh, I am Matt Perino. Uh, we are here at Gillette Stadium. I am joined by ESPN's Mike Rodak. And the Buffalo Bills just finished week 16 uh, a few hours ago. A couple things to uh, talk about. They fall 24 to 12. Uh, in week 16 against the Patriots, they've dropped now both uh, to New England this season. Uh, but, Mike, the big thing uh, is Josh Allen, mm -hmm. you know, and we've been – I wanted to have you on today because, you know, as two guys that have been on this beat all year talking right. about Josh Allen, there's a, there's a national conversation going on that you can't really um, miss, mm -hmm. right? You know, the, 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 the inaccuracies. Uh, no pun uh, intended. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the painful nature yeah. of watching Josh Allen. Even you saw it a, a little bit today in the press room, you know, a couple real errant passes at the beginning. Yep. Uh, and there were some giggles, some laughs. What's been your takeaway? I mean, obviously, we'll get to today, but for overall, what's been your takeaway from Josh Allen's season? Well, it's funny. I talked to somebody. Not, doesn't He works for the Patriots. He's in part of their media core, and he was actually he came away impressed from this game with Josh Allen, and he's typically skeptical. I remember being in his press box sometimes, and he would be kind of peering over the ledge and saying, hey, that Tyrod Taylor guy, man, he does not look good. But he <laughs> said today that he's actually – somewhat impressed by Josh Allen, or at least he sees where the potential is. And mm -hmm. look, I, I think if you're looking for Josh Allen to be a complete product, you're not going to find it on the field. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's there yet, and I don't think it yeah. anybody should reasonably expect it to be there. That's what the scouting report said, was that it was going to take some time. So mm -hmm. I don't think anything's really off base there. I mean, Baker Mayfield has the better stats. He was the more pro-ready quarterback. Sam Darnold probably falls into the same boat to a lesser extent. But this is what we expected out of Josh Allen. And I think when you look at, you know, completing less than 50% of his passes, that's fine. Like, when we look at each pass and, and what actually happened on the play, mm -hmm. you know, Logan Thomas goes through his hands. Robert Foster looked like he lost it in the sun. Mm -hmm. The list goes on and on. Like, it's clearly not just him. And I think anybody who actually watches the games and then breaks it down will see that. But with that said, I think it's also fair to criticize him when he makes the throw – uh, to the right sideline, and I'm, I'm blanking on who it was that he overthrew. Mm -hmm. wasn't even focused on the receiver, but where the ball went, and mm -hmm. it's just laughably bad. Like, right. It's fine. Like I right. think it's it's totally fair to acknowledge the shortcomings, but also say there's a lot of potential and there's a lot of room for growth. I think both can be true. I don't think it has to be this dug in on both sides argument that he is going to be great or he's not going to be great. I don't know, and we'll find out, but just by watching what he's done so far this season, I don't think you can conclude anything either way. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting. You have a lot of overreaction, no matter what, good or bad. You know, he, he has a good day, a la the Jacksonville game, the Minnesota game, and he's the savior. You look at a game like today, maybe against Green Bay, where he struggles quite a bit um, with, you know, the simple things. Like, you got to remember, this guy's still, you know, seeing things in this league for the first time. We talked about it today. He said New England did a great job disguising um, their coverages, disguising what they were going to do before the snap. And a guy like Bill Belichick, he's mm -hmm. been making money in this league for doing that for years. Right. I, I saw, you know, Josh Allen. No, no rookie quarterback has ever won in this building right. when Bill Belichick was here. Yeah, I mean, you could tell. Look, I was here covering Mark Sanchez in the second year. I remember in 2010, and that was actually a good year for the Jets. But when he came in here, the Bills or the sorry, the Patriots changed up what they were doing. Mm -hmm where their entire defensive line was aligned differently than what you saw in film the rest of the season. So he knows you come in, your rookie quarterback coming in, and you give him something different from what he sees, then it's going to screw him up. And that's what the Patriots did today. There was a lot of that amoeba front, whatever you want to call it, where there was one player who was just one down lineman. Mm -hmm. You have safeties in the middle of the line. You have linebackers on the outside. You have guys all over the place, not where they're supposed to be, not where they're typically where, where they typically have been. And – Obviously, he had some problems with that. And I think there was just a general sense. He's a pretty confident guy, but I think coming into this building and, you know, you have Tom Brady on the other side, you could sense some jitters early in the game, mm -hmm. some of his throws, um, which, again, is fine for a rookie. I don't think anybody can or, or should bury him based off that. Um, but it, it's hard to win here, and I, I think all in all, he had a, a decent enough day. Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing that I – taken away from, you know, Josh Allen's season and what needs to happen going forward. I, I think that you watch a game like this and you think, okay, what what could kind of 
maybe change the the momentum of the game and it's like getting getting the short passing game going. And right. how do you do that best with your running backs? I mean, we had a very interesting situation in the locker room after the game, but it's yep. you know Lashawn McCoy's production has there's no doubt about it. It's been down. Um, he's not. He doesn't look like the same player. And in that short passing game, I thought when we were talking about it in, in training camp. Mm-hmm. Brian Dable coming in, bringing in this whole new uh, creative offense was going to really utilize the running back. You right. see it even now, even in a game like today, where LaShawn McCoy didn't even really have an impact on this game. He was wide, lining up out wide mm-hmm. as a wide receiver, but that just hasn't clicked. Well, you could see the Patriots version of it, what Dayball draws himself from, and that was, well, more Burkhead today, but in the past it has been James White. It was James White in the first Patriots game this mm-hmm. year against the Bills. Whether it's one guy or the other, they always get their – uh, their their passing game going through their running backs. In fact, that's what a Bills player told me this week was it, it starts with the running back and then it goes to Gronk and Edelman. And that's what we saw today. I remember there was a few plays where they'd clear out, they'd have a receiver or two receivers on the side, they'd clear out those guys deep, the running back would skirt out underneath them and it's an easy seven or eight yards. There's nobody there. And you just don't see the Bills typically running the same sort of plays. And I think when you give the ball to LaShawn McCoy in space, he's not able to make the same sort of plays that he used to be uh, compared to what Burkhead's doing or, or what James White could do. Keith Ford had the opportunity today where he gets the ball and it was kind of a, a bad throw behind him and he wasn't able to make that play. But uh, I've said it the entire year. I think running back is, is potentially the biggest weakness on this roster. And I know people will say, oh, offensive line, wide receiver. Running back position has been brutal for the Bills this season, even coming into the game on Sunday mm-hmm. where – I think they ranked 31st, the running backs did, in terms of yards per carry Mm -hmm. in the NFL. If you look at just that position as opposed to the entire production of the Bills running game where Josh Allen obviously has some yards. So they have gotten nothing out of the running game uh, from their running backs, but very little out of the passing game as well. And that has just stalled the entire offense. And I think you're totally right. If you look at the Patriots, they they do a lot better with it. So we're at week 16. You're looking into the future here. Uh, not not really much to play for next week against the Miami Dolphins team that are, are eliminated. They are, yep. they are eliminated from the playoffs. So, you know, you're looking at in, in the next season, and, you know, there's a lot to talk about with LaTron McCoy. I just put up a story at, at NY Up. Uh, you covered it as well, mm-hmm. you know, what's going on there, that, you know, the Bills can save a lot of money if they don't bring him back next year. Right. And, you know, there's starting to be some, you know, you go back to the training camp and what happened mm-hmm. with, you know, the court case and all that kind yeah. of stuff. It's that still could active and it's still there. Nothing exactly. changed. It, the motion to dismiss was denied. It's still ongoing. And, and something could happen on that at any time. And now Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean, guys that have been in his corner, mm-hmm. you know, there was obviously a little bit of a dust up this week. There was a situation that McCoy didn't want to go into, but he w- he didn't start today's game. So, you know, as you look into the future and as this youth movement movement comes into play, there's been times where I thought McCoy has been a good leader this year. Mm-hmm. The Charles Clay situation was one where he came out after the game, said, hey, we're not going to put it on anybody. He kind of stood right. up as a leader. But, you know, sometimes you got to cut your loss in this league. Yeah, that's exactly it. And whether or not he's able to turn around next year, I, I think I'm totally fine with the Bills letting him go. And if he plays well somewhere else, like, you know, the Vikings let Adrian Peterson go. Um, he's playing well right now in, in D.C., oh, well, like, mm-hmm. that's fine. Like, maybe he could have played well in Buffalo one more year or Peterson could have played well in Minnesota a couple more years. But at the end of the day, they went out, they got Dalvin Cook. I think they're in a much better spot for the future. There's nothing saying the Bills can't do the same thing and devote some resources to the running back position, which, quite frankly, I think they've kind of neglected mm-hmm. the last couple of years as they have kind of just ran out shady and – you bring in Chris Ivory, that's a very short-term signing. Marcus Murphy's just probably a guy at this point. Right. He's 27 years old. I don't think he's, he's really the future at that position. Keith Ford, I mean, again, you're just taking a look at him. It's not like he's anything, um, a major piece for the future. So you need somebody else in there. I, I think you're totally cool. Or you should be totally fine with this walking away from Sean McCoy. Does he have any trade value? Probably not at this point. You're probably going to have to release him. And I, look, I just think they're – they're kind of the Bills and, and LaShawn McCoy are clearly going down two different paths. I mean, McDermott has made it clear this season is about building a culture and building for the future. LaShawn McCoy, I think, is more concerned about his legacy, about his stats, about his, his pride. And that's fine. Like, he's an NFL player. Like, he's allowed to have those priorities. But I just don't think they mesh with the Bills' priorities. And I think that that kind of came to a head today. Mm-hmm. And you talk about priorities and you're looking at next year in this NFL draft coming up. 
obviously very heavy at the at the top. Uh, we'll start to really dive into that in in the coming months here. But you know, defensive. You know, middle defensive line could be an area where that this team wants to address. You saw today, they really got gashed pretty bad by this running attack. They did, defense. they did, and honestly, I think part of it is Tremaine Edmonds. I think is having some issues um, getting off blocks. Look, he's not from the start. He wasn't really the prototype at, at middle linebacker. He was more of an edge player in college. We knew, given his age and, and given this is coming in the NFL, it's a big jump that it was probably going to take some time with him. At the end of the day, I still think you have to ask the question about whether he's better inside or better outside. He's more athletic than he is strong. There are some plays today where he was engaged in a block. He doesn't doesn't quite have the strength to get off of it. He can probably get around it if he tried, but then you're getting yourself out of position. So middle linebacker is a position where you're playing less in space and more in a confined area. How much would you think he was protected by the kind of breakout season of Matt Milano this year? I think he was in a way. Um, I think Milano is, is a more natural fit at his position than Edmonds is at his. So I think Milano kind of has an advantage in that in that sense. Obviously, Corey Thompson had some issues out there as well, the undrafted rookie that the Bills are starting in place of Milano. Um, but I think it, a lot of it's at the linebacker level. I think, you know, there's obviously some issues with Kyle Williams and then Starlo Tulele from time to time. Harrison Phillips, you know, he drafted last year. He devoted a high round pick on that. I just don't know how much more resource you can put into that position as opposed to just letting it play out with, with what you have, maybe adding, you know, another mid-round draft pick. But I think you have too many needs across the rest of the roster to be spending, you know, let's say the Bills get the eight or ninth pick, to be spending that on an interior player. Um, that would be a hard sell, I think, for this fan base. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill sitting at 5-10. Uh, and 10. Uh, I think I looked it up, currently drafting seventh uh, in the upcoming draft. That'll obviously change by, by by the time Tuesday comes around. But thank you very much, Mike, for joining me for all of his uh, stuff on the Bills. Head over to ESPN, check that out. And for all your Bills content, uh, keep it locked on the NYL. Thanks for joining us, guys.